wouldn't it be nice if you could have Mrs. Fox, the English teacher, with you all the time so that when you're at your desk writing a memo or a letter or presentation, she could tell you if it was correct? Or is it if it were correct? A word processor can help you type better, but to write better, you need a different kind of software. Today, we take a look at writing style software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and VIX serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and sitting in this week for Gary Kildall is Paul Schindler. Paul, you're a writer. Absolutely. And in addition to your word processor, I mean, you need, you need reference books when you write. You want a dictionary or a thesaurus or, or a style book or a Bartlett's or something like that. But it seems to me, as a writer, wouldn't it be more convenient, instead of having all these books on some bookcase behind you, to have it all inside your computer? Absolutely, Stuart. You know, there's a natural human tendency towards inertia. You're sitting there at your keyboard, you're working on an article or an essay or a speech, and you say to yourself, this isn't quite the right word, or I think I know the quotation, I've got it close. So you write it down, and you say, well, I'll come back to it later and fix right. it up, but you know, you never do. Right. And if you had it online, you'd do it right then, you wouldn't interrupt your flow of thought, and I think you would produce better writing. Paul, today we're going to take a look at several writing style programs. We'll look at something called Choice Words, Letters Online, Grammatic 3, Microsoft's Bookshelf, and Wordbench. Now, you probably have a word processor that has an online thesaurus, but if you want a major league thesaurus that's even better than the book, there's something out there called Big Thesaurus, and we found it being used at MacWeek Magazine. Writers and editors at MacWeek magazine face a regular task of daunting proportions. They spend each week sifting through stacks of product announcements and news releases, searching for newsworthy items to write about. To help keep that writing fresh and lively, some members of the staff have turned to a Macintosh writing tool called the Big Thesaurus. The key thing that I think makes it usable is that it's always available on the Macintosh. It loads in as a desk accessory, so you just pull it down from under the Apple menu and it's right there. Uh, the windows pop up. Um, it has a lot of, it has a large, uh, large number of words. I think they say 1.4 million, um, so it's a substantial vocabulary. The Big Thesaurus doesn't offer writing style or grammar hints, but it is more than just a huge list of words. MacWeek's writers can move through a series of windows showing several layers of synonyms and different nuances of meaning to find the most accurate word. Each window is arranged in an outline fashion, first by part of speech, then by definition and synonym, and finally by related words and antonyms. The lengthy definitions can be viewed in different fonts and point sizes, and windows can stay open while a document is being edited. MacWeek's news editor says that for some people, an online thesaurus can help to stimulate creativity. But he also feels it should be used sparingly. Some people, I think, overuse thesauruses and abuse them, and that's why I'm a little wary. But I, I, like everything else about writing, it's really in the hands of the writer to use the tools well. Joining us in the studio now is Bob Moriarty, Marketing Services Manager with PowerUp. Next to Bob is Don Emery, President of Reference Software. Paul? In the history of uh, grammar checkers, what, what's the point? What is a grammar checker or a spelling checker or a writing tool, what's it trying to do? Is it substituting for an editor? Is it substituting for your fifth grade teacher? Uh, is it trying to teach you something? What are they trying to do? Well, I think each one of those products um, attempts to do a little bit of, I want to answer you all of the above. Um, in each case, word processing increases your productivity, but these writing aids or language aids help you, in many cases, really improve the quality of your writing as opposed to the quantity. Bob, you have a kind of interesting approach with uh, something called Letters Online, which is, which is unique. It's not really a checker of any sort. Instead of 
telling you how to write, it kind of writes it for you. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. Just tell us about Letters Online. Sure. Letters Online is a uh, product that contains over 800 uh, commonly used business and also personal letters, uh, ranging from everything from accounting and collection to schools, organizations, and charities to uh, legal. Um, uh -huh. And so we run the gamut. Even some, some real interesting personal letters in there as well. Show, Do we show want us to take how it works. At it? Yeah. Sure. Here's our, our main menu here, and basically we can browse uh, the the categories mm -hmm. of 800 letters in the program. You can see again the range of, of uh, categories presented here, accounting and collection, legal, ordering and shipping. We'll go into, uh, for example, general business okay. here to take a look at what we might be able to look at. While you're doing that, Bob, you keep mentioning that there's 800 letters. Does that make this a gigantic program, takes up half your disk? Absolutely or? not. As a matter of fact, uh, you would have the ability to partition the information if you wanted to separate the letters from the basic program. Uh -huh. uh, actually, the five and a quarter inch version of this comes on two disks to make that real easy. The three and a half comes on one disk uh, for that, but it does not take up an, an inordinate amount of space. Are these stored as full text or? Uh yeah, it, this, the program essentially runs as a standalone program. Um, so you would you would just call it up and interface it with your word processor. Every one of these letters is a compressed ASCII mm -hmm. text so file. So you'd actually pull the file out here, dump it into your word exactly, processor. Exactly, exactly. And, and it's can, compressed ASCII. It takes up less space than it would if you started. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, show us, show and it's ready to be transported. Bob. Okay, we've called up, for example, here one uh, sample general business letter. This happens to be a confirmation of agreement. We can take a look here at maybe all of the letters contained in this category by hitting the F5 key for scan. And here's a, an immediate listing of, of all the letters. We can scroll down this uh, with the arrow key. There's also uh, a search key here so that if we wanted to type in any particular uh, keyword, for example, sure, try that. And uh -huh. we've got a listing of letters here. So easy to, we can dial that up simply by hitting enter now mm -hmm. and we're set mm -hmm. to go. And again, Areas uh, in the letter that you see in brackets are areas that you might want to customize once you send it over to your word processor. And, and um, as you indicated, you can you can search this by keyword or something like ab that. Absolutely, we just did that with with the word price here. Yeah. Um, another thing we could do maybe is go out to the legal category and do a check okay. there, and we'll do that by hitting the F3 key. Take a look at legal. We have. Uh, in this category over, well, you can see here on the top yeah. of the screen, 131 different letters. And this is a letter uh, that, a category that I think is especially useful for users who just don't have the expertise to mm -hmm. know what to write in this uh, sort of situation. We provide the necessary text and again, sending it out to your word processor, mm -hmm. uh, you can simply go in and type in the, the customized information. Bob, I noticed you have a, a personal letters category Abs in there, what is that? Absolutely. That is a listing of really quite a variety of letters here. Uh, this happens to be a condolences uh -huh. letter here, not maybe the most cheery topic, but maybe if we pull up uh, F4 here for search, and uh, we've got uh, actually a, a fun letter in here, well, yeah. depending on, on whether Which, you're on the receiving end of this letter, uh, a Dear John letter. Um, we can type in a keyword here and uh, go out and well, hit... That's a congratulations uh, letter. <laughs> yeah, a congratulations okay. letter. But we'll go out and take a look at, uh, with our search, our, uh, F5 key here and, and go down go. to refusing, refusing a marriage, marriage proposal. proposal. Dear and blank. <laughs> right. Dear blank letter. What we've shared over the past year right. has been more than beautiful, so on and so on. Actually, very well put. Uh, will, will this, will this uh, work with any word processor? It will work with any word processor that has the ability to read an ASCII text Great. file. Bob, can I ask you to get out of that and slide the keyboard over to Don? Absolutely. We want to take a look at Grammatic 3 in just a second. And while you're doing that, uh, Don, let me ask you, uh, what, what's the cost of a program like Grammatic 3 and, and what kind of user is it meant for? Well, Grammatic 3 retails for $99 and it's available through all normal software type stores or computer stores. But what kind of user do you have in mind? A professional writer, a student, a business person? Mostly, the program is primarily aimed at business writing, but it has high uses in university, at university and junior college level teaching classes, a wide variety of institutions mm -hmm. are using it in that way. How about professional writers? Professional writers find it useful. Um, you so, they sort of fall into two categories. Those who believe that no one writes better than they can and they can't be improved, right. and those who are always concerned on improving their writing. Don, we have it up here. Could you show us how it works? Sure. Um, the program, you simply 
it couldn't be simpler to use all the commands are on the screen. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see Alt B, and that's all you have to hit to begin checking. Now, in this demonstration, the first section, we have a number of mechanical errors, things like doubled words, doubled punctuations, improper capitalization in the middle of a word. Those um, are things that simple spelling checkers could catch. Some of them. Uh, the capitalization probably wouldn't be caught, right. or the double punctuation. But these are the mechanical kinds of errors that word processing introduces. They're not generally intellectual problems, yeah. but you do a block move or something, and they're hard to catch. Um, this is missing punctuation. Um, now here's a stylistic issue. A number of is long-winded or wordy. Now notice that we divide the screen into two parts. The top part is your native word processing file. Over 33 different word processors can be worked on. Um, and the bottom part of the window is our suggestions. And you notice we identify the problem as long-winded or wordy, and then we make a suggestion, which you can then adopt. Let's move on to a few other type programs. Here's a redundant phrase, all throughout. And if we wanted to make that correction, we just hit F9, delete that, and go on to our next problem. Um, here's a typical expression that's a stylistic issue. It's not completely wrong, but it's something we should mm -hmm. use sparingly. Now, here's a true grammar error. And what makes gra one of the things that makes grammatic truly unique is it really does grammar checking. Mm -hmm. To give you an example of how we do that, we do a thing called parsing. That is, we take a sentence and we divide up the sentence into words, mm -hmm. and then we assign a part of speech to each word depending on its position in the sentence. In this case, ITS is identified as a possessive pronoun, and because we, of its position in the sentence, we know it should be IT apostrophe S, it is. Well, that's easy to fix. We don't have to go back to our word mm -hmm. processor. We just simply go over to it, add the apostrophe, and go on to the next problem. And that, of course, would be impossible for a spelling checker be to, to find because sure. ITS is correctly spelled. Absolutely. <laughs> Same thing with the word form. We can tell form from from because of the part of speech it, it mm -hmm. has in the sentence. Another feature of Grammatic, not a lot of grammar checkers are interactive. You're going through and looking at the errors in context. Is that right? That's correct. You have two options, and we try to give everyone complete options for using the program. If you want the program to mark everything, you just simply tell it to do that. Mm -hmm. My experience and most people's experience is as a writer, there's a lot of issues in writing that aren't hardwired rules. Uh, passive voice, for example. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes not. Now, we also have a, a, an extensive built-in help system. If we tell you something like possessive usage and you don't know the rules about mm -hmm. possessives, you can simply hit F1 access our grammar help system, and you'll get yeah. a page or two full of rules of telling you how to do it, how to make a possessive, and so forth. No, no, we have only about 30 seconds left. Show us the analysis feature that I think you have in here. OK. Um, you see, after, the, after the program uh, goes yeah. through your file, we give you a full statistical information about the product, sentence length, readability, and so forth. And if you'd like to see those, we also compare those graphically. And we compare them with um, a life insurance <laughs> policy, a Hemingway short story, <laughs> right. and the Gettysburg Address. That's great. Um, we are, oh, excuse me. I strive right. for Hemingway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get there? Gentlemen, thank you very much. You can't always, of course, have your computer with you. There have been some handheld devices you could carry around, electronic dictionaries, but pretty much they've just been spelling devices. Now there's a new one out that has 100,000 word vocabulary and definitions. Wendy Woods has a report. As the publisher of Andrew Siebold's Outlook on Professional Computing and an influential industry advisor, Andrew Siebold is seldom at a loss for words. But when the muse does fail, Siebold turns to a small black box carried in his jacket pocket, the Word Finder a handheld writer's tool that can correct spelling, find synonyms, and even offers a limited dictionary. I use it almost everywhere I go. I do a lot of my writing on airplanes with laptops, and I do a lot of proofreading anywhere. I mean, now with fax machines, I'll be at a hotel traveling, and I'll get copies of our newsletter pages sent to us, sent to me, and I need to proofread them, and I'm looking for a word for a synonym or a question of spelling. This is like my right-hand man when I'm doing that. The $130 word finder from Selectronics of Minneapolis has a 100,000 word spelling checker, a 220,000 word synonym thesaurus, and can define over 50,000 words. And while the product has its limitations, it represents a major step forward in technology. Well, the fascinating thing about this is that all these words and all these definitions and synonyms are all in little silicon chips. And once they're in a device like this, they're easily moved 
You can take the chips and you can put them in laptops. You can put them in. There will be a whole new generation of handheld DOS computers that will be coming out in a year or so. It's ideal because it's already in silicon. And because it's in silicon, it means it's cheap to move from one product to another. In San Francisco, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us in the studio now is Linda Mitchell. She's product manager with Microsoft. And next to Linda is Jane Tamlin, executive editor with the Addison Wesley Publishing Company. Paul? Uh, Linda, the idea of Bookshelf is a terrific one. Uh, taking a whole bookshelf full of reference works and making it online on the computer. But it wouldn't have been possible before the CD-ROM technology, would it? Well, certainly not on one disk. Uh, the CD-ROM technology allows you to put 550 megabytes of information on a disk. So we're able to put these 10 reference works that are on bookshelf as well as several others we could add if we needed to. So you couldn't even have done it on a hard disk if you took uh, the biggest ones I know of are 100 <laughs> megabytes. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> Show us how Bookshelf works, Linda, and how you would use it. Okay, Bookshelf is a TSR. It actually pops up on top of a word processor. We're going to pop it up here from your DOS prompt to show that you can use it as a standalone mm -hmm. reference as well. It just comes up Alt-Shift, and here's your title bar. And across uh, that key sequence is adjustable, too. If you don't like Alt-Shift, you can make something you can, else. You can change it, right. Across the top here of the title bar, we have uh, the Thesaurus, American Heritage Dictionary, a spell check, a usage alert, uh, this is the Chicago Manual of Style, the World Almanac, Bartlett's Familiar Quotations, Business Information Sources, Zip Code Directory, there's a Forms and Letters program, mm -hmm. Options, and Help on the Disk. Okay, so what, what would you show us here? Well, let's go into the dictionary here, and I'll show you how it would look up a word for you. It's all run by first letters here, although you could use it with a mouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you would enter a word, and let's say, for instance, we wanted to enter the word grammar, and I'll spell it incorrectly just to show you that it will give us a couple of different choices. Uh -huh. Okay, so we wanted to look up grammar, hit return, and now we're into the American Heritage okay, Dictionary. So this is a real definition dictionary. This is it, this is mm -hmm. full text. And right. if you had brought it up over a word processor, you could simply cut this and paste it into your word processor. Right. Two keystrokes, copy paste, okay. right. Then escape takes you back out. Okay, what, what other elements could we look at? Okay, let's say you wanted to look up a, well, if you wanted some information out of the Chicago Manual of Style, Notice that you can look in the books a couple different ways. I'll show you here that you would might want to go in and take a look at the table of contents for the Chicago Manual style, give you some ideas. And then you would just scroll through like so. Mm -hmm. You wanted information on names and terms, you just hit return. And now we're in the Chicago Manual style. These little delta signs here mm -hmm. at the end of each chapter heading right. are actually cross-references. And you can go in and take a look That's at your cross -references. Within that book. Right, this mm -hmm. is all in the Chicago Manual okay. style. What about the, the, you have a Bartlett's in there? Bartlett's Familiar Quotations is here. Let's try looking up the uh, famous uh, uh, John Kennedy quotation, ask not uh, what you can do for your country, Ask not well, what whatever, it yeah, is. whatever it is. Whatever yeah. it is. So we'll that's, you, that's exactly what happens <laughs> okay. when you're writing. So. so you put in a couple of key words. We happen to know that there are three together. That'll make our search a little more specific. Okay. And it'll do a search, and it'll bring me up the first line of every quote within Bartlett's that contains those three words together. It's important to point out, in fact, this is better than using the book, right? I mean, you couldn't do this kind of search if you just no, had you the couldn't. book. No, you couldn't. No. OK, and okay. here we have that first line. And there it is at the and bottom. And so, my fellow Americans, sounds okay. like a speech. Hit return. And again, this is Bartlett's Ask full not text. what your country right. can do for you. So ask what's what the you asterisk can do. tell us there at the end of that? That book. means that there's more information available. If I put my cursor here under that and hit return, we'll get a, a We a found out that Kennedy took that line from Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. Which I didn't know before I got my online Bartlett. So the bookshelf just gave us a bit of information we didn't have. Well, that's interesting. Right. And again, you can copy and paste that right into your sure. uh, document. Now, there was one other uh, book. Uh, you have a zip code directory, which I find uh, an extremely ha handy part of the prod uh, product. Right. Yeah. Well, Let's enter an address here. Actually, if you were using this over a word processor, uh, it would automatically configure this address for you. Uh -huh. This address is Microsoft's address. Oops, it wants me to fill out all of it. At okay. Washington. Right, it'll prompt you for that. And okay. it'll do a search for the zip code for me. So it's just running through that entire fad zip code book. Right, and, and there, it there it is. Here it is, here. Okay. It is here. Now, in a word processor, I would simply hit return, and I'll do it yeah. here and show you that it enters it there. Okay. 
at your... Linda, I want to ask you now to slide the keyboard over to Certainly. Jane, if you could, if you want to take a look at, the, at, at WordBench. Uh, let me ask you, while she's getting WordBench up, on Microsoft Bookshelf, are there new versions of that coming out? Are they going to be updated in some way? We are going to update the product. Uh, the exact date of that update hasn't been Can announced. Can you tell us what, what would be in the update? How would it be better? Well, it'll be more current. Certainly, oh, okay. the World Almanac and some of those reference works so will be more current. Books will be updated. We'll be adding some additional reference works. And how much is it? It'll stay at 295. Okay, now Jane, what is WordBench? How does it differ from the other things we've seen in the program so far? Well, WordBench is a writing environment. It is designed to have all of the tools a writer needs for writing and editing in one place um, to make them fully integrated and make them equally accessible. In terms of writing style software, WordBench doesn't um, impose a style on the writer. It simply lets the user use the computer in ways that support his or her own writing style. Show us some of the elements of WordBench. Um, well, these are the. This is the program menu, and this shows the primary applications in WordBench: the Outliner, Note Taker, Writer, Print Manager, Folder Manager, and the Add-in Manager for um, program extensions. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you the Outliner very quickly here. WordBench's Outliner lets you create an outline up to four levels deep and up to 256 levels long. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to see the big picture, you can. Uh, you can collapse the outline one level at a time, or collapse it all the way. Mm -hmm. And conversely, you can expand it a level at a time and expand it all the way. These little plus signs that we saw flashing by on the side, then mm -hmm. those indicate that you haven't expanded it all the way up. Exactly, and it means that there are levels buried underneath. Mm -hmm. When it's set like this, this is the maximum number of levels I can add. Um, we and also this feeds have into the next application then, in, in the uh, master menu? Yes, it does. Um, if we go into the note taker, we can see a list of notes that we've already created. And if I go in and browse these notes, I can uh, link my note to a uh, heading in my outline. Um, I can also link my note to a reference that I collected with the reference tool, mm -hmm. which I can show you in a second. These links are dynamic, so if I make any changes in, in either the outline or the reference, those things are, remain consistent. How much is WordBench? WordBench is $189 for the MS-DOS version. Um, and then I can have the body of the note, um, which I can go on for a couple of pages. Um, you can see here at the bottom is the full complement of WordBench desktop tools, which are available throughout the program. The reference tool, which you saw a little bit about before, allows me to go in and uh, develop my bibliographic information or my source information. It also includes a special tool within a tool called the Reference Assistant, which gives me an online reference to the Modern Language Association Style Guide. And which I is can one of the most popular style guides for for academic and professional mm -hmm. writing. Um, this doesn't impose the MLA style on me. It simply allows me to use it as a model. We're looking at the MS-DOS version. There is also an Apple version. Apple II version Function runs on all the, the Apple mm -hmm. II computers functionally identical, yes. Um, and what's the next tool in the, uh, in the, in the menu? Well, once I, I have my uh, note taker, my notes selected, um, I can go into the writer and start a document. And WordBench provides the great word processor to go yeah. with the great writing environment. And one of the areas where WordBench is unique is that it allows me to take the, the pieces of text that I've already created and merge them into my document. In this case, I'm going to combine my outline and notes. Mm. All of my outline headings are automatically converted to document Almost writes headings. It for you, no exactly, yeah. the instant rough draft. Gene, I know there's saying. a lot of power in this, but we don't have a lot of time. There's one okay. uh, feature that's fascinating called brainstorming mm -hmm. in WordBench. Would you show us that? Sure. The brainstormer is um, brought into WordBench through the add-in manager, which will allow us to bring other add-ins into WordBench as time goes on. Um, these four techniques in the brainstormer help you get over writer's block. Free writing gives you a timer and um, forces you to just keep writing and <laughs> Um, won't let you back up or edit. Invisible writing is similar, except that you can't see what you're typing on the screen. <laughs> and theoretically, this, this has been proven to help you write. It has. All of these techniques have been tested with writers and students. Okay. Um, what were the other two features there? Uh, nut nut shelling forces you to stay within a, a small text area so that you have to be concise with your writing. If you tend to go on forever. It won't scroll. That's it. You fill this box, you're done. Exactly. You can edit in this mode, yeah. however. And goal setting allows you to go in and uh, develop these four specific goals for a piece of writing. Jane, Linda, thank you very much. They're both fascinating tools. That's our look at writing style software. We'll be back in just a minute with this week's computer news.
in the random access file this week, it was just a little over a week ago that IBM announced the fastest ever PC using the new Intel 486 chip. Now Intel says it has on the drawing boards the 786 chip, which will hold 100 million transistors and include four central processors and an artificial intelligence-based user interface. Intel said the chip would be powerful enough to handle direct voice input from the user. An Intel spokesman predicted the chip could be available by the year 2000. Meanwhile, a company called N-Cube has announced what it says is the world's fastest supercomputer, the N-Cube 2. It uses massive parallel processing, up to 8,000 processors operating simultaneously to achieve speeds of up to 27 billion floating point operations per second. That is nine times faster than the Cray YMP. The low-end version of the machine sells for half a million dollars, and N-Cube says it already has orders for 170 machines. Good news for laptop users. The FAA says it will not ban the use of laptops on airplanes. The Department of Transportation had been considering a ban on all onboard electronic devices for security reasons. However, the FAA did say there will be tighter inspection of laptops, particularly on international flights coming into the United States. In an effort to stay ahead of the Japanese in the production of dynamic random access memory chips, seven U.S. computer companies have formed a joint venture called U.S. Memories to domestically produce DRAM chips. The companies involved are IBM, DEC, HP, AMD, LSI, Intel, and National Semiconductor. There are still some antitrust questions to be resolved. Toshiba has cut prices on nine laptop models. Here are some of the price changes. You'll notice prices were not cut on the low-end T1000 or on the new T1600, which is already in short supply. IBM says it won't roll over and surrender to Apple in the multimedia market. Big Blue has just announced two new MCA expansion boards that greatly enhance the video and audio capabilities of PS2 computers. There's a video capture board that can accept video from any analog source, and there is a new audio capture board which converts audio input to digital form for editing and compression. Microsoft says it will offer four major Macintosh business applications in a package at a 35% discount. The bundle includes Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Mail. The package price, $849. Claris has announced a new version of AppleWorks with over 100 new features. However, the new package can still run under 128K on an Apple IIe or IIc. The price is $249, the upgrade price only $79. Finally, the SIGGRAPH International Computer Art Show has opened at the Computer Museum in Boston. Here is one example of more than 50 works created by computer artists from around the world. This piece is called Continuum 1, Initiation by Dean Winkler of New York. The show continues through September 5th. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next week. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and Bix serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, Send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.